When I bought my first BMW back in 2014, I really didn't know anything about the cars or what I should be looking for. Basically an E90 came up in the search results, I thought it looked cool, and I bought it. It wasn't until later on um, when I started watching some YouTube videos and I joined some owners groups that I realized there was a lot of cool options and features out there that unfortunately my car didn't have. So the reason that I'm making this video, I want to show you guys some of the most sought after BMW options. That way you guys don't have buyer's remorse like I did. Now it's important to note that if you're buying a BMW secondhand from a dealership that's not necessarily a BMW dealership, um, they themselves might not be aware of all these options. So throughout the video, I'll give you hints on how to spot these options at a glance, just in case it's not specifically printed on the sales sheet. So the first thing on this list and something that's really popular amongst BMW owners is comfort access. That's BMW's brand of keyless entry. So as long as you've got the key in your pocket, you can lock and unlock the doors. You can start the car and drive around. Um, on some of the newer ones like this car, you can actually wave your foot under the rear bumper and the trunk will open. That's really helpful if you've got your hands full of groceries. Now comfort access is one of those things I always thought was gimmicky until I had it. Now it's hard to go without it. Like when I drive my other two cars, I feel like a Neanderthal, you know, I have to actually have to take it out and put it in the ignition. It just feels so old school, but um, it's just one of those things that once you live with it for a while, it's really hard to go back to anything else. The easiest way to tell at a glance if a BMW has comfort access is the front driver and passenger doors will have ridges on the top of the door handle. That's where you're gonna press with your finger to lock the doors. Parking distance control or PDC is another one of those things I always thought was gimmicky, but I actually find it to be super helpful. And honestly, I would take the parking sensors over a backup camera any day. The way the parking distance control works is you have ultrasonic sensors built into the front and rear bumpers that can detect objects within about three feet of the car. And you'll see like a visual representation on your iDrive screen of where stuff is. And you'll also hear an acoustic tone through the speakers that will get louder as you get closer to something. When the tone becomes a solid sound, that's how you know to stop, you know, don't go any further, you're gonna bump into something. I find this to be super helpful, especially when I'm pulling into my garage. A lot of times I'll have like miscellaneous camera gear or tools just laying on the floor in front of the car that I can't always see from the driver's seat. So just having the sensors, it lets you know when to stop your car so that you don't accidentally run things over. Um, another time that it comes in handy is when you're pulling into a parking spot, especially if your car's lowered like this, or maybe you've got a fancy carbon fiber lip. It just helps you from like scraping the front of your car on a parking block or a curb or something. So the parking sensors automatically turn on when you shift the car into reverse. You can also manually turn them on anytime if you're pulling forward just by pressing this button on the center console. The easiest way to tell at a glance if the car has parking sensors is you're going to see those little dimples in the front and rear bumpers. Life cycle impulse is BMW's very strange marketing term for facelift, known by enthusiasts simply as the abbreviation LCI. Um, not necessarily a feature, but might help you decide which model year you wanna look for. So BMW produces each generation of their cars for around six years. In about the midway point of production, they'll do one of these life cycle impulses or facelifts, where they give the car some aesthetic upgrades as well as some minor uh, tech and mechanical improvements. So here's a couple side-by-side -side photos so you can kind of see the differences. Basically, they're keeping the body of the car the same, but they're making aesthetic changes to the headlights, taillights, and bumpers. Um, also, if there's any mechanical issues in the early production models, usually by the time the LCIs come out, they'll have revised parts that solve those problems. LCIs are sought out by enthusiasts because they're the most polished and updated version of a generation, sort of like a grand finale before BMW rolls out their next generation of cars. Um, you're gonna pay a little bit more for them because they are the later model years, but to me, I think it's totally worth it. M Sport. So without a doubt, the most sought after option by enthusiasts is the M Sport package. You can spot it a mile away from the more aggressive bumpers with the larger intakes in the front. They also have the special M Sport steering wheel, seats with thicker side bolsters, and they'll also come with exclusive M Sport wheels that are exclusive to that package. Now I already know the question that's been on everyone's mind since I got this car is why didn't I get an M Sport this time around with everything that I knew from my last car? And basically there's one reason and one reason only, and that is YouTube. YouTube content. So before I even bought the car, you know, my biggest sponsor, Keys Motorsports, we had already talked about uh, what projects that we wanted to work on together and what they wanted to sponsor on this car. In the M Sport conversion, it was so popular when I did that on the E90 that we wanted to do the same series on this car. So if you're following along the build, I actually have the bumpers. I just got them back from the paint shop. I'll be putting them on the car very soon. 
As a YouTuber, I wasn't necessarily going out looking for the most spec'd out F30 I could get my hands on. It was more like which car is going to give me the most opportunity to make video content for you guys. So that's the reason that I did that. Of course, if you're not a YouTuber and you're just buying one of these cars, it's a lot cheaper and easier to just buy one that's already got the M Sport package uh, rather than trying to retrofit all those parts after the fact. Since the 90s, BMWs have been available with xenon headlights and then later on LEDs and even laser lights on some of the newer models. Now these headlights have those special rings on the inside known by enthusiasts as angel eyes or corona rings. They're standard on the higher trim models, but they're optional on some of the lower base trim models. So I get a lot of messages on Instagram from people who have the base halogen headlights and they're asking if they can upgrade to the xenons or the LEDs. It can be done, but it's ridiculously expensive. So for this car, it's a 2017 340i. Each one of my LED headlights is around $1,600. So the prices are just insane if you want genuine BMW. Now, of course, there are aftermarket brands that sell headlights. I think Depot makes lights for this car, but um, who knows how good the weather sealing or the UV coating is gonna be long-term. I would say if you want a BMW that's got the signature headlights with those rings on the inside, you're a lot better off just buying a car that's already got them installed. Alternate colored interiors. So by default, these cars usually come with black or beige interiors. Now, if you're new to BMW, you might not even realize that colors like this coral red even exists. It's kind of an uncommon color. So to me, that makes the car feel a little bit more special when you get in, it's just got that wow factor to it. Now, I know that red not, might not be everybody's taste, but if you're looking for something bold, these colors might be something to look for. In my opinion, the red interior is really what makes this car, and for me, a white car with a red interior is my favorite color combination. Um, it just, like I said earlier, it just makes the car feel more special and premium than it actually is. I mean, at the end of the day, this is just a 3 Series, but whenever I get in here, it just feels like a very special, very special safe place. <laughs> For many BMW owners, the upgraded sound system is a must have option. You can spot it right away on the F30s by the Harman Kardon branding on the door speaker. And uh, I've talked to some BMW owners, they say that the bass audio in these cars isn't that great. And because the audio systems in these are so complicated and so deeply integrated into the iDrive system, it's not gonna be something that's easy to change after the fact. It's not like the early 2000s where you can just walk in Best Buy and get yourself the aftermarket CD player and a pair of Sony Explodes for the trunk. It's not quite that simple with these newer cars. Um, if you're a person that likes to listen to music in the car or maybe you've got a long commute, you like to listen to a good podcast or audiobook, I highly recommend finding one of these with the Harman Kardon speakers. Trust me, you'll thank me later. The cold weather package is a package that would be great for people who live in cold climates. Obviously, it's gonna come with heated seats, it's gonna come with headlight washers. Basically, they um, come out from the bumper and spray the headlights if you're driving in snow or something. And then the newer BMWs will even have heated steering wheels. Now, because I don't really drive this car that much in the winter, I have another car specifically for winter driving. Um, that wasn't really a priority for me this time. It would have been nice to have, but it wasn't a deal breaker when I bought this car. Lastly, for those of you who drive a lot in the snow, I would recommend a car with X-Drive, which is BMW's all-wheel drive system. I had it on my E90 and it came in handy many times. Now again, because I have another car specifically for driving in winter, um, I opted to get rear wheel drive this time around. To me, I just think that rear wheel drive cars are a little bit more fun. And just by nature of having fewer, fewer moving parts, there's less stuff that can go wrong. Um, when I had my E90, some of the most expensive repairs that I had were related to the all wheel drive system. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, you just have to decide for yourself if you drive in snow enough to make that worth it. Newer BMWs will have the X drive badge on the trunk and fenders. So those are just some of the options that are most important to me. Now, of course, there's tons of BMW options out there. This video could have been an hour long, but I don't know. If you own a BMW, leave a comment down below and let us know what the most important options are to you. I'm sure that would be helpful for someone looking to buy one of these cars, but these are just some of my favorite things if I was in the market for a BMW today. So thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't already, and look forward to those bumper videos very soon seats with the really thick side bolsters and they come with um special really special it's just so special i can't even say it <laughs>